stock clearance special. I've wanted to do one of these for ages, but didn't get round to it. Except now I have, and you're presumably about to watch it. Anyway, occasionally Poundland will get in items which are obviously things that were sold in other shops for far more money. You know, they're proper branded things and that kind of stuff. And for one reason or another, they didn't sell in the normal shops, so they've been stinking up a warehouse somewhere for years. Eventually, Poundland come in, buy them all cheap, sell the items off for a pound each. I'm sure you're aware of that concept. Anyway, I've got hold of two rangers, well, everything I could from a couple of rangers, to show you today. And the first, frankly, is one of the most horrific things I've ever encountered in my life. We're starting off well. I present to you Polly Pocket. No, not Polly Pocket herself, she's just a girl with an enlarged cranium who jumps around everywhere. I present to you what's in the box, the Cutants. You see, they're like mutants, only cute. If you look, you can see clearly what they are. They're like a ketchup bottle and a mustard bottle in the shape of a cat and a mouse. Except they're not. As the back clearly tells us, it is a cat crossed with a ketchup bottle and a mouse crossed with a mustard bottle. So basically, uh, Polly Pocket seems to have gone completely insane, like some sort of Nazi scientist has killed all her pets has skinned them, and is repurposing them as inanimate objects. Let's have a look, shall we, because I'm sure that's just the sort of toy you're thinking of picking up for your children. I know I'm not. Right, so the little plastic things, um, covered in glitter for some reason, that one, to enhance perceived value or something, and yeah. Basically, it's like the worst form of taxidermy imaginable. She's killed a cat, hollowed it out, and is using it to dispense ketchup. Not ketchup anybody would want to eat. And the same thing goes for the mouse, except it's got more humorously shaped ears. It's even got its dead eyes staring out at her from her kitchen every day, Polly Pocket, you demonic lunatic! But they didn't just stop at weird things for putting ketchup sauces in. For instance, have a look at this shiny cat that's also a cassette tape. Basically, she's got a cassette tape and glued on the cat's tail ears, whiskers, and paws, and then stuck its eyes in it. That's just absolutely monstrous. But don't worry, it gets worse. It turns out she eats them as well, or at least wants to imply she is. Here's a tiger that she's somehow um, stuffed full of sugar and turned into one of those Christmas candy cane things. Mm -mm, it looks so happy with its uh, horrible glass eyes staring out at you. That's uh, how do you render a corpse with sugar? I don't want to know. The next one, I don't, can't even tell you what this is or what it's supposed to be. It's like a shiny blob. It came with the um, candy canes, so presumably it's supposed to be food. I mean, what? Um, Gumdrop? Uh, no idea. Actually, I've still got the packaging around here somewhere. I wonder if we can find out from that. Uh, here we go. Uh, nope, 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 nope. That's that one by the looks of it. It is. Oh, it's a dog, not a cow. I thought it was a cat for some reason. Oh, it's got like a dog's tail. Look. Dog and. Yeah, sparkly gumdrop. No idea. Little. Hang on, they look like they're frolicking a. Oh my god! Just when you thought this couldn't get any worse. What fresh hell is this? Where's the other packet? Hang on. They're not dead! They're still alive! Trapped in some sort of horrifying inanimate spot. So Polly Pocket is like some sort of comic book villain now, is she? Who's got like a team of mad surgeons who run around <laughs> repurposing her animals as semi inanimate objects. How is that still alive? Why would it want to be alive? If it could speak, what would it be saying? Kill me. Is exactly what it would be saying. Oh man, this has taken a turn for the dark. Right, let's look at the last couple of things we've got, shall we? I don't want to anymore. Um, here's a uh, stereo that was a dog, or might still be a dog. Yeah, it does move, look. Help me, help me, kill me, put me out of my misery, etc, etc. Um, yeah, it's just basically bits of a dog stuck to a radio with a weird action feature. That's not very exciting. I think I've dropped one of them. That's annoying. Oh wait, here it is, because you wouldn't want to miss out on the half pig, half camera, would we? Look, you push in the screen on its back, and its nose extends slightly. Nose stroke lens. And it's winking because she can only find bong. Oh no, it's still alive, isn't it? So it's just sort of twitching and screeching in agony, I imagine, and that's why one of his eyes are closed. And lastly, we have 
a calculator crossed with a cat. Actually, the tail. This is supposed to be a skunk. Why has she got hold of a skunk anyway? Why is she doing this? So obviously he's run out of pets to transform into engines of pain, and so has now gone on to just kidnapping wild animals. Well, here it is with its cute little face. And look, it's lenticular. If you move it, it says, like calculators can, hello! Except I'm actually presuming that, rather than hello, that full stop is marking the difference between two words there. Hell is where it thinks it is, and O oh is it screeching in agony. I mean, good grief, Polly Pocket, what happened to you? You used to be cool, and now you're just like the worst person who ever lived. I've just had a thought. Are these animal tests before Polly Pocket starts on humans? Oh my god, she's going to invite all her mates over one day, punch full of rohypnol, and they wake up turned into fan heaters or something. Good grief. Well, I thought this was a fairly horrific concept to start with, but now I am seriously freaked out by the whole thing. I'm not surprised they ended up in Poundland. Who thought this was a good idea? It's just horrible. I mean, the whole concept is horrific. I mean, you might be laughing now at home, and just wait until you get back from work one day to find that Polly Pocket's team of psychotic surgeons has turned your wife into one of those automatic bread makers. Anyway, uh, there you are. If you want your daughter to play with some eternally suffering crimes against nature, these toys are absolutely perfect. Personally, I'm going to lock them in a big lead-lined box and then chuck it off beachy head so it doesn't inspire future generations to perform horrific acts on living creatures. Sue, I'm home. Sue? Sue, are you there? Where are you? Help me. Green Lantern, a name synonymous with failure not only in cinematic terms, but also in toy terms, apparently, because the figures were all over Poundland like a big green rash. Now, I haven't seen the Green Lantern film and don't know much about the comics. My entire uh, knowledge is that there's a bloke called Hal Jordan, or possibly a different bloke, depending when you read the comics, who has, like, this magic power ring. I think originally he had a lantern, or does he have a lantern that he sticks to the ring? And I don't know, but it, like, lets him make green holograms that smash things up or something, and inexplicably he's weak to the colour yellow, or something absolutely bizarre like that. And the villain in it is called Sinestro, which is a really poor name for a villain because it contains the word sinister. So, um, you know, it's a little bit too obvious. Also, um, there was another villain called Parallax, who looked like Hal Jordan, except he had, like, um, white in his hair. I only know that because I had a figure of it once. <laughs> I think I won when I bought some fun-sized Mars bars. Oh, what a bizarre week that was. So yes, um, all these action figures have turned up there, and they're all right. They're quite nicely moulded, I suppose. There's not much articulation in them. Um, let's have a look, shall we? But first, here's some jewellery. For you see, every figure comes with an identical Green Lantern power ring of your very own. Look, it's tiny. As in, so tiny, if you get it any more on your little finger than that by bending the hard rubber, it would cut off the circulation. So that's one for very, very small children only, or for tiny little monkeys who happen to like Green Lantern. Anyway, who have we got then? First up, it is indeed Hal Jordan. Here he is. Look, he's like a test pilot, and he's got his test pilot gear on. Let's take it off. And now it's... It's not Ryan Reynolds. I think it's supposed to be, but it's really not looking much like him. Yeah, that's not a great figure. It's sort of old Star Wars figure articulation. Probably cost him a couple of quid to knock out. And the first time I bent it, its arse fell off and then its legs dropped off. Are these ones that failed some sort of um, quality control, or were they all like that? Imagine if you paid eight quid for this, you bend it and its bum falls off. Anyway, that's Hal Jordan, Ryan Reynolds or something. What's what's the detail on the back of the package? Hal Jordan, after being selected, I don't care. Who's next? Purple-headed man. Here he is. Look, he's basically like Hal Jordan, except he's got a purple head. Let's not think too much about that, figuratively. And he comes with some sort of thing he's made from his... Um, is that the best you could come up with? You can create anything out of these sort of light constructs, but you've got a big spiked mace to bang people on their head with. Well done. And look, 
you can move the arms around like that. That's about the only interesting bit of articulation these have. Look at me, mother! I may have a purple head, but I can fly! I'm sure that's exactly the voice he has in the movie. Um, so yeah, I don't know, perhaps he's just a really angry bloke. No idea. What's his actual name? Abin Sir. Crash landing on Earth after escaping the terrible entity Parallax. Ooh, there we are. Green entity? It was just a bloke when I saw it. Oh, I don't know. He must find... I don't care. Who's next, then? I'm pretty sure this one... In fact, I'm 100% sure, because I've just seen his name on the box, is the villain Sinestro. This is odd, and I shall tell you for why. Because, um, his head is normal. I'm certain in the comics he had, like, a giant forehead. But perhaps they cut that out of the film in order to make it, um, cheaper to produce or something. And he comes with a weird green sword, and then, like, another bigger green sword. He's quite keen on his swords, basically. But other than that, he's Hal Jordan with a different head and an amusing spivvy moustache. I believe in the film who's played by, uh, Mark Strong, who's an excellent actor and probably deeply regrets being in that film. Well, probably not, actually, because they paid him quite a lot of money, I would hope, anyway. So, yeah, that's Sinestro. Look, hang on! He does have the giant forehead, so why doesn't he have the giant forehead on the figure? Rubbish! Hate. Not right. Kids aren't going to like it. But not to worry, because we've got one that's not like Hal Jordan with a different head now. <laughs> it's basically a small child's drawing of Chewbacca. <laughs> I love the face! It's probably all it can say. And it's got little dopey legs and a giant swamp thing-like hand. It makes it look like it's constantly extending its middle finger to you. Marvellous. These are quite well made, not like those ridiculous, um... Well, test pilots with falling off legs. Um, it comes with this really weird thing that looks like... I don't know what on earth that is. It's just got a connector and it's a poke people. Unless it's... Ah, oh, hang on, it's an adapter, look! <laughs> comes with an adapter to use other people's weapons, because it's so stupid it can't think of its own. What a shame. Um, also, that's a bit of a cheat, because then if you want him to have a weapon you have to buy another figure, don't you? I'm not very keen on that. Anyway, that's by far my favourite so far. That's one for the shelf of interesting items, I think. Um, what's it actually called? Voz. I see. Voz comes from the hostile world of Ekiram, one of the... Oh, for crying out loud. I know there's this thing in Green Lantern where it has hundreds of people in the Green Lantern Corps, but all, they're all for, like crazy aliens and stuff, but some of them do feel a bit phoned in, don't they? Anyway, next one's a cool one. Velociraptor Man! Oh, it's, oh his mouth doesn't move, that's a bit distressing. Yeah, it's basically a Velociraptor in a Green Lantern suit with a ring. Uh. Uh, uh. You just know he's going to have a job like he's actually the one who operates the call centre or something. Ooh, horrible sort of uh, bony skeletal tail as well. Ooh, not keen on him. What weapon does he come with? Oh my goodness. Ooh, he's a bit of a sicko, look. He comes with uh, some sort of bear trap. Yeah, actually does that. Look, clunk. There we are. Bite your leg off. Lovely. Oh, well, I suppose dinosaurs are going to be a bit vicious. And also a bit stupid because it's got a lead of, like, one and a half feet. So... Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. Oh, there's that bloke trying to get me. No, no, keep walking. But you, this thing's obviously connected to you. I can see it a mile off. Should have thought this one through. Ooh. I think I like that more. Here we are. Stick some eyes on top. Interesting. Kind of. What's his name? Isamot Cole. I don't know, is it? Born in the slums of Thanagar is a reptilian hero. Oh, yes, fair enough. We can get all that. Go on, then. What's up next? Next up is... Frog bloke. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Frog bloke with this weird mid-chest articulation. <laughs> it just looks really pissed off. So would you if you basically looked like something that dripped out of somebody's nose and were given a power ring. Oh, it comes with a gun. Oh, it's the only sensible one out of the lot. The other ones will have to get up close and personal. Oh, I've just dropped it. Never mind. Um, yeah. Half man, half frog. Looks like something made by Polly Pocket. Um, don't really know what to say to him. I hope he has an amusingly French-sounding name for racism lols. Ho, ho, ho. No, what is he actually called? Green Man. What? The Little Green Man and Zoom Zoom? What? The Green Cross Code Man? No? Born on the suppressed world of Uxor, Green Man dared to defy authoritarian rule. Yeah, he, he's got the face of somebody who's dared to defy authoritarian rule. Actually, he hasn't. He's got the face of somebody who's behind you on the bus who hasn't got the correct change. Anyway... <laughs> It's just something that... How about one that's a half-man, half-frog? Brilliant. Let's knock off early. Okay, next up, we've got... Oh my god, this 
Ich war... <laughs> Jump cut, sorry. I, I thought I was immune to these ridiculous designs now, but seeing them all again in a row has just sent me off. Anyway, this is just like a big stupid face with hands, with creepy long fingers. But wait, you haven't seen the best bit yet. It's got tiny little withered legs off massive thighs. Like, and as if to highlight how stupid it is, I don't know if you can make this out, it's got defined toes, so it hasn't even got like shoes or something. It's just some... This is like something somebody came up with to take the piss, isn't it? You know? Here, slip this one in, see if John notices. And its weapon seems to be a, like a cross between the thing Klingons use in war and a motorcycle control unit. Um, oh dear, and its fingers go in and out. Oh my goodness, that's just... <laughs> I, I lack the necessary language to tell you how ridiculous I find this thing. The look on its face helps as well. Um, what is this called? Gallius Z. Hmm. Always ready for a fight. <laughs> Gallius Z delights into charging into battle. I mean, look, if you're going for a headshot, you just have to hit it anywhere. Well, with an oversized cranium, yeah, no shit, Sherlock, that forms the bulk of his body, this quick-tempered and outspoken member of the Corps is usually first to volunteer for a mission, inspiring his teammates to follow his lead across enemy lines. <laughs> I suspect they just get him to go first because they hope he'll be killed because they're embarrassed of hanging around with, oh my god, the face of Bo returns. Terrifying. Right, what's next? Oh, it's another Hal Jordan by the looks of it. I haven't got a normal one, unfortunately. But I have got one who looks pretty fabulous. Yes, it's Starlight Express Hal Jordan. <laughs> no idea. He's just all glittery and spangly and is uh, auditioning for Magic Mike, presumably. Just don't get that at all. You can bend his legs and let his arse falling off, though, so he's better than the test pilot figure. And comes with this ridiculous accessory that looks like the front of Ghost Rider's motorcycle. Actually, if we fit it together with... Uh, perhaps you can build a motorcycle if you get enough parts. I've got no idea. Anyway, there he is. What was he actually called? Hal Jordan is all it says on the thing that's on the front. Oh, Solar Saw Hal Jordan. So that's the selling point. No comment. Um, but yeah, he's all glittery and spangly. Hesper, not very interesting one. Go on, what's next? Oh, this is more like it. This is like a sort of proper alien thingy wudgy with another adapter. Um, yeah, he's a big bloke, isn't he? Look at that. Wouldn't want to arm wrestle him. Um, yeah, sort of vaguely demonic, goblin-y sort of face, actually. Um, quite uh, better articulation. This is a really nice, solid figure, actually. Don't mind this one at all. Um, you can also spin it around as you can with the others to make him look at his own backside to see if it's clean. So, you know, a very useful alien feature. And, yeah, he, he's quite a formidable thing. I mean, that's the thing that would be charging into battle head first, not the thing that's only a head. Anyway, what's its name? Kilo... Kilo Wog? Good grief, can't get away with that. What is that, the SI unit of racism or something? Um, no, I'm not even going to comment on that, that's just horrible. Um, next. I don't know what this one is. Ah! Oh yeah, I like this one. Its weapon may be a horrible pointy insect leg thing, but the thing itself is like a robot insectoid thing. How bizarre! Look, it's got sort of weird pipes and goodness knows what on its face. And it does have the ring, so it must be alive and not just like a robot construct. Because isn't that bizarre design? I quite like that. It's like something from a 70s sci-fi book. It is apparently called Stell. He comes from Grenda, a planet inhabited entirely by robotic life for... Hang on! The picture looks absolutely nothing like it. That's like a sort of cool space marine robot thing. Right? Includes claw uh, Early concept figure. Oh, so it's not a figure of something in the film. It's a figure of how they were going to make it, but then they made it generic and boring, because presumably Michael Bay came into the room. Oh dear, go on, what's the last one then? Hal Jordan again. Couldn't even be bothered to get him out of the package without looking. Except it's bright green Hal Jordan. From when he's got a horrible disease, or he's at, uh, what's the thing, Max Charge Hal Jordan. Ooh, he's, he's all charged up and he's got his ridiculous bow and arrow because apparently he couldn't think of a gun like somebody with some bloody sense. Oh well, that's interesting. Does it light up? No, it doesn't. Did they make more expensive figures that light up? I have no idea, but I presume they did. Anyway, that's the Green Lantern according to me and then according briefly to the back of the packet. All I know is I spent about 11 quid on these bloody things. You okay? Yeah. 
Do you want some bread? Uh, no. No, not the mochis. Oh.